communication with this tree. And it was more in the sense of a sense of disappointment from this tree. And the tree was was trying to let me know how how the other how they felt of what was going on with, with this 3D reality and how, you know, so I felt their disappointment. Yeah. So, so in that way, it was really excellent, but at the same time, it, it was, you know, disappointment. And was that one of your earlier experiences with, with such yeah, things? Yeah, it must have been, uh, eight. yeah, I was 18 at the time. So, was, uh, I mean, just, just on a very practical level, because I think people who are... Um, not familiar with such things will find this interesting the fact that you just said you had a communication with this tree and um, understood its sort of disappointment with what was going on in the world or in its environment or whatever as a young man how, how did you integrate that into your way of thinking about things when you come back to the the normal consensus reality because that's something that we're not allowed to do is it really we're not allowed to communicate with the uh, non-human things normally um, well, for, for myself, it really opened me up to, to knowing that that did exist. And because some people say, oh, no, it's the hallucinogen and you might be crazy and blah, 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 blah. But it's just knowing that, that what you're going through, you know. And not only that, when you're in that state of mind, there's this understanding that it's so hard to explain in words. And once you come off of it, you're seeking that understanding again that you have. So yeah. even as a young man, you didn't have a problem with that. You were, for whatever reason, open enough to think, okay, you know, that's interesting. That's that's a new development. Didn't freak you out? No, because already at that time I, I was doing some meditation, not not as heavy as I do now, but um, how can I say? It... it it put me to the, the point where you kind of get greedy at, during that time. So you want to do more because you want to stay there. Because in another way, you don't want to deal with, you start to see the, the BS more clearly. Yeah, but that's the dangers of being uh, yes, a young man, isn't where, it? Because you weren't as mature as you are now where you can do something about that. Whereas if you're having a, a tricky time and you look out at the decay and deceit and rubbish of the world, there's a temptation to just escape. Yeah, and and I even, even remember some people explaining their their trips and saying how they couldn't see anybody's faces. Their faces were were gone when they would see people. And now, now I'm I'm starting to understand what they were seeing is that there was no no identity, so they couldn't see people's faces. I don't know if, if either one of you guys ever experienced that in your earlier, um, if you guys ever took it recreational, you know, not the same way as now. Well, I think it's quite a, it's quite, um, it's quite something that a lot of people make contact with individually, and then you can pull all those together and say, actually, we're all doing the same thing, and that is seeing that in the further up you go in the dimensional hierarchy, the spaces. It's not strictly speaking a hierarchy, it's more of a holonomy. The further you go up in it, the further you move away from a static, anchored, singular self. So if you move up into a 4D space, and it is, you know, people who, once you're there, you can, if you can hold yourself there, you can then, with experience, go to a 5D space. So those, you know, fifth dimensional experiences, which once sounded so crazy... If you just look at the mechanics of it, it's not so strange after all. But when you're there, one of the distinctions, and if you talk to people who um, do channel work and who work at you know very high-level realms or whatever, despite the fact that many of them aren't doing it experientially, they're getting communications from those realms, which a lot of people can't deal with and just think is bullshit. But if you just look at what they write, it's interesting in and of itself, regardless of whether you buy it or not. Because they describe a lot of interesting stuff, and one of them is that the higher up you move in those realms, the less self is important. And so you might even be seeing a reflection of that physically or visually to say, 
well really there is no tom and ramon and neil what what we're talking about is a very very temporary configuration just a little story that we tell for 100 years or less and then that disappears really it's it's so temporary that you can really just put a mask over it and say yeah they are faceless because it, it's not actually individuated consciousness it's still part of the the whole but it looks separate and so perhaps you were seeing a um you know a reflection of that somehow mm. yeah. the the other one is it's i consider in the same level as um they call as i know about is holotropic breathing where you start breathing very um fast and deep and you get yourself in the same state, which I yeah. wouldn't suggest anybody who who's not doing it with someone who knows what they're doing to do it. No, indeed, it's like it's like all these things. If you uh, get half the technique uh, and go away and have a go at it, you, you can do yourself a lot of injury. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for myself, um, right before your um, uh, that Monday, right before y your talk. I was doing that, and for me, that it was in the same level as if I would have took something. Um, it was quite quite amazing. Um, the difference with that that is, as soon as you get there, the first thing you deal with is these walls that that you that you have it in your life, um, whether it's emotional blockage of things and and it. It's almost like, for me, it was kind of like a slam into those walls. And you have to push it, push through these walls. Yeah. And it even got to the point where I just, like, gave up and then, because as long as you keep the breathing, you stay there. And once you stop the breathing, you kind of come off of it. Hmm. So... Okay. Uh, well, I, I'd like to kind of go over into a little bit of the uh, consciousness in the mind, uh, some of the workings of the mind. Uh, now, one question, what control does the conscious mind have over the, or the subconscious mind or the ego mind have over the subconscious mind? Ordinarily, very little indeed, very little. It's, it's sort of like um, you could say, if you want a, a way of thinking about this, and even when we're speaking about dimensions and frequencies and so on, we're talking about a way of thinking about something. Um, and in this respect, you could say, if you imagine like a huge super tanker out on the ocean, uh, you know, one of those enormous, massive aircraft carrier sized things or whatever, and you've got like, the, the, the wheelhouse, the cabin, where the little box where the captain sits. That's the ego. The ship is the subconscious. And it's just a way that we have categorized things to say, well, you've got the conscious, the superconscious, the subconscious, the this, the that, the other. It's a way of thinking about it. It does help us understand a simple thing, though, that the bit of the mind that we're conscious of is a very small part of it and is a very um, survival orientated and a very sensory orientated part of the mind. And what we do when we engage ourselves with meditation and breath work and plant medicines and so on is explore what it means to traverse that boundary and say, well, I kind of know how the ego, how the local mind works. And the ego is really associated with preservation and um, survival and so on. And it seems to be that it's found itself kind of falsely promoted into a place of extraordinary influence in the mind. And it's not really qualified to do that job. And so we end up with a lot of problems in the world because there's a lot of egos running things. And instead of running them from a place of growth and a place of expansion, they run it from a place of fear and a, a place of contraction. And it, you could say, when we think about the mind, knowing this helps to make sense of things. It doesn't excuse them. It doesn't mean we can just let it go, but it helps us understand what's going on. 
And once we do that in other 